So can you explain to us the president's thinking on what an acceptable role for Assad would be in this new transitional government that's being created? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think that's something that's hard to articulate from here because this, again, I think this is going to be part of what uh, will be discussed by the international community uh, in New York later this week. And, uh, you know, our view is steadfast. It is that uh, President Assad has lost legitimacy to lead that country, not just because uh, his, uh, his actions are morally repugnant in terms of the way that he has used the military to attack his own people, uh, but also because as a practical matter, you're not going to succeed in uniting and governing a country that you spent the last five years attacking. So just as a purely practical matter, we need to see some new leadership inside of Syria. And the question is, how do we bring that about and who is that person or who is that group uh, going to be? And uh, there are a lot of countries in the region that have uh, a vested interest in uh, figuring out how this is going to work. But ultimately, it's the view of the United States that this needs to be a, a process that reflects the, uh, the desires and ambitions of the Syrian people. So if that could be the prime minister, he could have another role in the government. He just can't be the president. Well, again, it's hard to imagine that the Syrian people, uh, most of whom have been violently attacked by Bashar al-Assad, are going to be at all supportive of him having a senior role in their government. Uh, but again, the Syrian people will have to decide that. But. Uh, it would be, uh, I think, I guess, an irrational decision uh, for them to suggest that he somehow uh, uh, is up to that kind of responsibility. It's going to be pretty hard for the Syrian people, four million of whom have fled the country, millions more displaced within it, to decide yeah. through voting. That's going to be negotiated. That's part of what's being negotiated, is who does what for how long in this new transitional government. So is it not frustrating to President Obama that there is no timeline still for Assad's departure, and we're about to enter on Friday a, a peace process to hammer out, you know, a trajectory within that country. I mean, that's not being hammered out by the Syrian people. That's being negotiated by diplomats. Well, certainly diplomats are going to put together a process that we believe uh, can be effective in bringing about uh, this kind of political transition. Uh, but this is not something that's going to be negotiated over the heads uh, of the Syrian people, or at least. Uh, you know, those uh, elements of the Syrian uh, opposition, political and otherwise, who have a legitimate um, claim to participating in these kinds of talks. It's not going to, it's not a long-term solution for the international community to try to step in uh, and essentially impose uh, the kind of political changes that we believe uh, our best for Syria. We certainly have some thoughts about that and we'll share them and that will be part of the negotiations. But ultimately this must be both in appearance and in fact something that reflects the will and ambition of the Syrian people. And that's why this effort to try to cobble together the Syrian opposition into some coherent body is painstaking and frustrating work but is central to our success. It's got to be frustrating for the president to look at the timeline for his own departure and look over at Bashar al-Assad, a man you described as a mass murderer, and have none for him. Fortunately, there's a much stronger tradition of democracy in the United States than there is in Syria. Uh, and it's one reason, you know, frankly, that uh, the United States continues to be the greatest country in the world and, the, and a country that can exert sub such, such substantial uh, influence in these kinds of discussions. It certainly adds to the credibility of our government uh, when we walk in there and we say, uh, well, the current President of the United States is not carrying out uh, mass attacks against his citizens, but yet he's going to do the responsible thing, and when his term's up, he's going to leave. <laughs> but can, can you not, I don't know if it fits on a bumper sticker. Right. But, but, but can't you explicitly say here, because the Secretary here is pretty explicit in saying, we don't need regime change. We're just talking about the guy himself, Bashar al-Assad. We don't need regime change. But yeah. Can't you explicitly say this isn't about Assad has to go anymore? It's about, you know, uh, what role he plays in the future. No, uh, you know, the, again, it is hard to imagine uh, a rational Syrian voter uh, deciding that somebody... Well, uh, again, uh, this is this is part of the painstaking diplomatic work that is underway, but uh, it is, you know, w we will see what this what this process looks like. It will play out, um, you know, not in the short term. Uh, this will be a, uh, this is going to require the sustained effort of the international community led by the United States uh, to to get there. Uh, but uh, you know, based on just as a practical matter, uh, what Assad has done, the violence that he has perpetrated. Uh, has um, uh, basically caused him to lose legitimacy to play a leadership role in that country.